Lil Mo Films. What up, world? It's your boy Lil Mo Films, and welcome to a special episode of the Chitlin Circuit. Hey, man, we got a Tennessee legend in the building today. I'm talking about one of the youngest ballers with the trajectory to be one of the greatest ballers to ever come out of Tennessee. I'm talking about Rodney Henderson. What's going on, dog? What's up? Tell him what's up with you, man. How you been doing? Been doing good. Just hooping. Staying out the way. There you go. There you go, man. Uh, I see y'all just finished up y'all uh, y'all season or whatever. You know what I'm saying? How you how you feel the season went this year? It's your I sophomore feel, year, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. How, like, how you feel that went? I feel like it went good. We could have we could have did better, but it was a solid season. Okay. Okay. So um, let me ask you this, man, because uh, we done did a couple of interviews before. I've been I've been rocking with you since you was what, how, how, about what, seven, six, eight, nine, yeah, somewhere around in there. Like you know what I'm saying? Like uh, me being a former hooper, I always keep my ear close to the streets on the hoopers, and you had hit my radar from your dad posting your stuff on social yeah. media. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I was just like, man, if this if this Somebody need to keep track of, of this young man's career. Yeah. Cause I seen it in you. You was dedicated. You was you was willing to practice. And a lot of young men don't realize that's what it takes if you really wanna be that dude. Yeah. You got to practice. It's like when you practice like you really playing the game before you even play it. You see that, don't you? Yeah. You got that. So let me ask you this, man. What what was what was that transition like uh going from middle school to high school? It was a big transition because, like, in middle school, I didn't see the same things that I'm seeing now in high school. And, yeah. Uh, it, 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 was, it, was it faster for you? Was it? Nah, I just caught on like that. It wasn't like, it was a big transition, but it really wasn't that big. Okay, okay. So what, what, was, the, what was the difference, though? Was, was the people bigger or was they, you know what I'm saying? Was it, what was, what was really the difference? Like, Mm, yeah, the people are bigger, and like actually way more people than middle school. And yeah, 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 yeah. I feel you. I feel you on that. So you um, so you was going to Macaulay. Yeah. And um, and and junior high, right? Yeah. Okay. Um. But then you went to Tina, in high school. Uh -huh. Uh, why not stay at Macaulay? Why why you choose Tyner over Macaulay? It just like at Tyner, <clears throat> like I had seen something different. Like I just wanted to be a part of the um the program that Coach EJ and Coach Dante had built. Mm. And then yeah. I feel like um yeah that was it. Yeah. Yeah, I grew up, I don't know if you know it, but I grew up balling with your coach and his brother, Tyrus Wood, yeah. EJ Ward and Tyrus Wood. You know, we grew up together. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. uh, definitely know your coach, and he a, he a great man. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, if y'all listen to him, he do know the way, and he will get y'all where y'all trying to get. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But um, what was the, what's the difference from... Cause I went on a I went on a trip to Macaulay one time and I went to lunch at Macaulay. Yeah, Hold on, I went to lunch at Macaulay, bro. I gotta tell yeah. you this. I went to lunch at Macaulay. You go in there like a restaurant, like, bro. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. beep the cuss word out, but this like a restaurant. Cause I'm talking about they had a hibachi station with a real hibachi dude cooking. Yeah. They had a Jamaican station with a real Jamaican cooking. They had yeah. a pizza. You see what I'm saying? What 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 what's what what's going to a private school like Macaulay? What's the difference between that versus going to a, a city, a public school yeah. like Tina? Like for like a private school, it's like it's like fantasy, really. And then I feel like a public school is reality, cause like when you like when you graduate high school, you gonna have to face reality, and public schools is reality. Damn, that's real. Nah, that's real. <laughs> That's your daddy, boy. God damn. <laughs> no, that's real. Because that's what it is. Like, that, that is no lie, bro. Because I seen it. I said, man, no wonder they no wonder they making it. Man, they got a real hibachi shelf. Yeah. Man, that's what y'all got going on. So, you know what I'm saying? So, so you chose to go to reality rap versus fantasy land. Yeah, it's like for preparation for life. Damn. 
I like this little nigga, man. <laughs> this little nigga cold. So, uh, okay, let me ask you this, man. So, so how has your um, how has your father's presence uh, helping you along your journey? How's that helped you? How's that? It helped me a lot because without him, I wouldn't even be in this situation. Like he helped me from from the get go when I was young, and him instilling all the things he told me, like it's helped me to do what I can do now. Tell you the truth, was you frustrated sometimes? Was he coming down on your heart? Was he yeah, like, man, you got to give me 16 sprints. <laughs> give me give me 30 push-ups, you missed a shot. Yeah. Well, he was on you like that. How, how was that? It was like, like when I was younger, it, it would be frustrating. But now that I understand why he did it. It makes sense now. Yeah. You, the, you the man now. <laughs> well, guess what? You wouldn't be the man. He, he knew how to make you the man. Yeah. You feel me? Like. You know, you know, it's a lot. You know, I know you know a lot of ballers who good, but they ain't had nobody pushing them. Yeah. Like you had pushing you. You feel me? Like you got to capitalize on it. And I say that because um, I'm, I'm leading into something because there's a lot going on in the NBA right now with one of my favorite players with um, John Morant. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, uh, him and his dad, John Morant's dad, T. And him, they kind of remind me of you and your daddy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, I just want to, I really want to know is, are you seeing John Moran as a young man, the mistakes that he just made? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he just made a big mistake that can probably cost him a lot of everything he done work for can be gone down the drain yeah. in one bad move in his life. How did you feel when you saw uh, the... The allegations on John ja Morant. I feel like, cause like the like the like the position he in, like like he in a big position. He got everybody watching him, so he can't really do what he want to do. And then if he want to do like what he want to do, then he have to do it like behind closed doors. Cause you can do one bad thing, and people will put a bad image on you for the rest of your life. Yeah, like nobody's gonna remember what he did. As far as with the gun and all that, nobody gonna forget that. Mm hmm. You know, and uh, coming from, you know, you from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Yeah. AKA Shooter Nooga. You feel me? I know you, you know, you got young dudes that you're around. You in high school, so I know they got guns and, yeah. you know, everybody doing all this. How do you go through your daily routine and your daily life to stay out of that trouble? You know what I'm saying? To not get yourself involved in none of that. Cause like I know I know where I'm going in life like can't get sidetracked off what I see just stay on my own path. It's real. Uh, your pops had posted like a recruitment letter on the internet a few days ago. You you been getting recruited by anybody? Cause I know when we first talked when you was a young dude when you was young you probably was about seven eight nine years old. You was like you wanted to go to Duke. Uh, where you see yourself ten to fifteen years? I say I'll be in the NBA for college. When I go to college, I want to go to Duke because it's a lot of good players. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Is there still something in your future? Because you done got a little older now. Shit changed. You know what I'm saying? Zion Williams was at Duke. Yeah. They was big. You might have been like, man, I'm going to Duke. Like, Zion yeah. Williams, is there still where you want to go? Or is, or is it somewhere else you want to go now? Or who been recruiting you? Or, you know, yeah. just let them know something about that. I don't want to go to Duke no more. But, like, that's a good school, but... I'm just leaning more towards Auburn or TSU or something like that. Okay, okay. So what, what about that change about? What 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 through your growing up from eight, nine years old to now, how old you is now? Fifteen. You fifteen now. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> you fifteen now. I'm finna play the clips. I'm finna play the clips while I'm talking, y'all can see the clips. I'm showing you when I first interviewed this young man. You know what I'm saying? This is how old he was at first and he's 15 years old now. What changed from then to now to make you say Auburn or TSU and not Duke? It's just like seeing the coaches and how they coach. Like they, the Auburn and TSU coaches, they similar to Coach EJ. Like, yeah, they similar to him. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Okay, uh... Let's talk about rivalries in Chattanooga. You know what I'm saying? Uh, who who you think Tyna's biggest rivalry is? Me personally, I come into every game thinking everybody rivalry. But 
If I was to say a rivalry, I'd probably say Brandon. Yeah. Because they got a they got a good squad. And everybody come out for the Brandon Titan game. Mm-hmm. That's, that's live, yeah. ain't it? Yeah, that's live. It been like that, man. Brandon, Tower, Tyner, and Howard, really. Like, Howard and Tyner, they come out. Howard and Brandon, one of the biggest rivalry games because it's been going on the longest yeah. in Chattanooga. But I feel like the new biggest rivalry is Tyner versus Brandon. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? How y'all do this year against Brandon overall? Like We did good. How many times y'all played? We played them like five, six times. What was the What was the record? They won three times, and they won twice. They won twice. Yeah. But they won in the tournament, right? Yeah. How did that feel? How did you feel like y'all beat them in the regular season? Like you say, three times. Yeah. But when it count, when it when you get to the game, that count. This going to take us to the next yeah. point. How, how, how you felt when that happened? I felt like we should have beat them because, like, especially in the region because, like, like, if you win or go home, then if you win, then you'll play at home. If you lose, you got to go on the road. And, yeah, us losing that, that like, it wasn't good. And then we went on the road, and then, like, we weren't getting the calls we were supposed to get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, um, you got any predictions uh, for next year? Because you're going to have to see them again next year. Yeah. Any predictions for next year? Um. I feel like everybody's going to be in trouble this year. That's, that's how I feel. <laughs> hey, y'all heard it here first on the chilly circuit. Look, he said y'all finna be in trouble next year, man. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, we trying to we trying to start something with this with this interview platform, man. We want to we wanna be able to document y'all careers. We want to be able to, and you finna be at the forefront of that. You like the first person I done ever did this with. But I had a vision, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I... I really felt like, man, we didn't we didn't have nothing like this. Me, me and your daddy coming up, wasn't, didn't nobody care. There wasn't nobody filming the games like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure your daddy had some games that he wished he had on camera that he could just show you right now. Like, look, son, I was firing them up. Look, but we, you know, we didn't understand the importance of documenting the, the process, the journey. You know what I'm saying? So, um... Okay, yeah, that's cool. So, bring it, bring it, bring it to our biggest rivalry. Mm-hmm. Uh, what you feel like your your best game was this year, your sophomore year? Mm, I say the game against Brandon. Against Brandon, what was your stats in that game? How you do? I had thirty one. Damn. <laughs> thirty one. Like, I had no, I had a couple of assists, a couple of rebounds. Mm. Okay, okay, and y'all won that game. Mm-hmm. Okay, that was the first, second, the third game. First game. The first one? Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, all right. That's cool, that's cool. Who was guarding you? Who was guarding you that pretty much? Uh, yeah, it was, was like, everybody? They were sure the whole team. Okay, okay, I got you. You was just on fire that night. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um. So I know you got siblings. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, How's that being a big brother, man? Like, I know they watching your air move. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How, how's that being a big brother and being a, being a star athlete? You know what I'm saying? Like, what do you feel in the pressure from that? Or? Nah, it's just like to set a good example for them and make sure I help them get on the right path and stay on the right path. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What you what you predict for your uh for your for your brothers for your? Cause I know one of your brothers play football. Yeah. And one of he he's trying to play basketball too. He yeah. already yeah. he already, but he looking like a little Khalid Elamine back in the day. Look, I seen him, but he look. Ooh, look, I said, okay, Boo got him out there playing around. How you feel about him, them? I feel like the second youngest brother, King, I feel like he going to be a good football player. Okay. Division one. I feel like the youngest brother, I feel like he going to be like a all-around player. Like he'll play anything. Okay, he good at everything. Yeah. Okay, okay. That's realistic. Well, yeah, man, um, I, I do this thing that I do. It's called Speak It Into Existence. You know what I mean? Um, and I asked you this question uh, the last time we did an interview. Probably, you know, you probably was, like I say, like six, seven years old. And I asked you, where did you see yourself in the next couple of years? And in my opinion, you done exceeded what you said then, where you was going to see yourself. So I want to ask you again, because this is a new time period. 
Where do Rodney Henderson see himself in the next five years? See myself either in, at a Division One college or in the NBA or overseas. Yeah. Boom. You heard that here first, man, on the Chitlin' Circuit. You know what I'm saying? A little more films. We bringing it straight to y'all raw. Y'all getting to see it before it happened, man. You know what I'm saying? So we just want to uh, let you give your final thoughts, your final shout-outs. I want to shout out my mama, my daddy, coaches, and uh, all the mentors and speeches that my dad done gave me. And, yeah, also, long live my aunt. Mm. And, yeah. Okay, what what's up with your aunt, man? Let me let me zoom in on that shirt. There you go. What's up with your aunt, man? I mean, how, how, what's your aunt? How she play a part in your life? Man, like every time I seen her, she said to listen to your daddy and not to uh not to fall in love with these chicken head girls. Woo! <laughs> we go in and on that note. Little more films, the chitlin circuit. We out. Boom. Little Mo Films, you watching the Chitlin' Circuit, y'all know what it is. Little Mo Films.